Right, in this video, we're going to introduce electromagnetic induction um, via emotional EMF. So where we're going is, uh, I think it'll take a few videos before we get there, but the main portion of this chapter is called Faraday's Law. Um, so uh, we, we, we want to talk about a few things that lead into Faraday's Law, though. Um, but Faraday's Law will be the, the main thing that explains everything, uh, all of this phenomena. So this first thing that we're doing is called motional EMF. Um, reduce current. So this, this is sort of an introduction to the chapter, actually. So, so the majority of this video will be on section two. Uh, this first section is just introducing you to, um, this, this belongs more so in, in Lenz's Law uh, section. Um, it's basically acting, it, 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 this is basically saying that things can act like a battery that aren't actually a battery. So, so uh, movement uh, with a magnetic field can actually induce a current, which is very different from what we've seen before. We've seen before that the only thing that causes a current is, you know, you have a, some battery. We didn't really zoom in inside the battery. Um, here we're talking about, for example, if you look at this picture, if you move the magnet up and down uh, with a coil next to it, uh, there's a way of actually, so what you can do is you can actually get a current to go around in the circuit, even though it's not hooked up to any power source. So the power is coming from you moving the magnet up and down. So this is what we're trying to explain throughout the whole chapter. Um, what we're actually doing in this video with motional EMF doesn't, won't be able to explain this, uh, but it will be able to explain something related. And both of these two things, what we talk about today and then this with Lenz's law, uh, we'll be able to explain using Faraday's law. So the, we're trying to get here with Faraday's law. We just need a little bit of background stuff first. Okay, so um, motional EMF. Uh, well, we can think of this uh, first just by thinking about a piece of metal that's moving in a magnetic field. So here we have a magnetic field that's pointing into the page, uh, and we have a piece of metal, uh, not hooked up to anything, just a piece of metal by itself, just a rod. For example, so um, so move this piece of metal to the right. Uh, what happens is, imagine you had a plus charge in the metal that was free to roam around, so free plus charges. If it's moving to the right and there's a magnetic field into the page, then by Q V cross B with your right hand, the uh, magnetic force is going to point up. So what happens is that very quickly the plus charges will congregate up here, and there will be a minus charge down here, uh, like if the charge carriers were negative, there would be minus charges that, charges that go down. Um, either way, there's an EMF that, uh, that is induced here, uh, and it looks like this. So this goes on, again, th this discussion uh, is very similar to uh, the Hall effect, but this happens, so these charges keep separating until the electric and the magnetic forces cancel. So only then would a char positive charge not feel any force anymore. So that's where uh, your book gets this relationship. So um, using this fact, using the fact that the electric field is this strong, you can actually calculate what the voltage difference is between those two sides. Okay, so this, this delta V, uh, so this thing acts like, acts like a battery where the top side is at higher electric potential than the bottom side, right? Like within this thing, the electric field is pointing down. So the higher, is at, the higher side is at higher electric potential. This thing acts like a battery where the EMF, and here we use IND for induced, induced EMF. Like it wouldn't otherwise be there, but there's some reason that uh, there's something that is causing it. So this is the motion of the conductor in the magnetic field, motional EMF. It's, it's, it's because of motion. So it's induced EMF it, uh, is V, the, the speed that the conductor is moving, times the length of the conductor. So this length right here is L. And then the strength of the magnetic field. Right? There's actually a more general formula than this, but um, as long as the motion of the conductor is perpendicular to the magnetic field, um, and the, the rod is perpendicular to both of those two things. So here the rod is up, down, it's moving to the right, and the magnetic field is into the page. So as long as all three of those things are perpendicular, you get this right here. So this acts like a battery. So if we, if we actually just took like a circuit right here and connected the circuit uh, to those two ends, 
So this part was still moving, but then the rest of this wasn't moving or you know, out, is outside the magnetic field region. Uh, then this thing will set up a current, an induced current that goes around this way in the circuit. So this X, this is an EMF source, just like any, any other thing. Uh, so you can get some induced current from the induced EMF. Um, yeah, that's all they're, they're saying here. So, so a lot of this is just sorting out the directions. So again, you could just think of plus charges or minus charges that are uh, moving along with the piece of metal. What's the magnetic force on them? Uh, and that'll tell you where positive or negative charges collect on the, the piece of metal. And there's the EMF between those two sides, between the positive side and the negative side. Um, yeah, induced current. So they're, they're just pointing out exactly what I said. So you can actually, this acts like a battery, just like anything else. Um, I will mention one other fact here, since, since the picture's here. Um, so we have this rod moving to the right. Uh, I think it's maybe in this, yeah. So in this, this picture, it says that the rod is moving to the right. So let's, actually, let's focus on this one first. Um, so as a result of the motional EMF, uh, so the motional EMF is going to be in this direction. This thing will act a lot like a battery where the positive terminal is on the top. So again, use the right-hand rule. Q, V cross B is pointing up. So magnetic force is up on these positive charges. So there's a positive end of the wire on the top side. Um, Okay, so this thing acts like a battery in this direction. And if you close the, the loop this way, uh, this is why there's a induced current that's running around in the uh, counterclockwise direction for this, this circuit. Okay, so this I that's labeled is because of the motional EMF. Um, so that's the first step, find, find the direction of the current. The second step, after you've, after you've uh, figured out that, that, that current is going up through the rod, so then what, then what you have to think about is, well, now there's a magnetic force on the rod because the current is going up. Right? And then if you use your right hand uh, for that, so remember F magnetic force on a wire is I L cross B. So the conventional current is pointing up and the magnetic field is into the board or into the screen, sorry. Uh, what you'll see is that there's a force there's a magnetic force to the left on the rod. So the rod's moving to the right and the magnetic force is to the left. And so this rod would slow down unless someone was pulling on it. And that's exactly why they have right here, F pull. So in order to keep this thing moving at constant velocity, you need to pull on it in that direction that it's moving. Magnetic force is the opposite of the direction of motion. So in terms of energy, which is what your book does next, energy considerations, uh, in terms of energy, what's going on is that if you weren't pulling it, so imagine you just said this was equal to zero. What's going on is that the, well, the rod would slow down if you weren't pulling on it. So kinetic energy is going somewhere, right? You're losing some kinetic energy to something. Where does it go? Well, that kinetic energy you can show is exactly equal to how much energy you've lost due to the wire heating up, due to the, the wire being a resistor. By wire, sorry, I mean the, the whole circuit. The whole circuit is dissipating the energy, it's I squared R, where I is the current, the induced current, and R is the total equivalent resistance of this loop. So the power actually that you need to provide in order to keep this moving at constant velocity is exactly how much power is being dissipated in the circuit. Um, and that's what the book is showing uh, right here. It's talking about how much power you're, you need to put in in order to pull this thing at constant velocity. And it's comparing it to the power dissipation of the circuit and you'll see, oh wow, they're exactly the same. Energy is conserved, huzzah. Um, eddy currents were, we'll talk about with lens, the lenses law video, or uh, we can't really explain it without <laughs> lenses law. Um, I'll point out one last thing, uh, the, the word generator. Uh, so we talk about, the, there's uh, the word motor and the word generator. Um, a motor will convert uh, mechanical, sorry, uh, electrical energy, uh, ELEC, electrical energy to mechanical energy. So we looked at an example of this uh, uh, last chapter uh, where you have like a, a permanent magnet uh, and then you can have 
you can keep switching the direction of the current to create a magnetic dipole moment that flips directions and it will always want it to feel a torque so that it lines up with the magnetic field so as long as you keep flipping the current direction you can get this thing to start spinning faster and faster so you can convert electrical energy to mechanical energy Any, anything that does that is called a motor when you're converting mechanical energy to electrical energy that's called a generator and actually what we're talking about here with motional emf you can create a generator with this, right? Uh, you're physically moving the rod, that's mechanical energy, one half mv squared. Uh, and then you, you're turning that energy into current that can be used in a, in a circuit. So you're turning it into electrical energy. Just wanted to point out the, those two words because you'll hear them a lot with, uh, with circuits. Uh, all right, I think we're ready for this problem here. So motional EMF. So what we have here is a, rectangular loop, uh, a, a rectangular conducting wire. Uh, and there's no battery or anything in this, uh, in this loop right here. Um, but we're going to consider that all the, the entire loop is going to be moving with velocity or with speed v to the left. So we're going to move, pick up and move this entire thing to the left. So what is the emotional EMF here? Explain why the loop acts like a, it has a battery and what's the direction of the current? What's the direction of that battery? Um, so if we looked at uh, what happens for a plus charge right here, let's see, it's gonna be moving to the left. Right? The, the, the whole wire is moving to the left. So that plus charge is moving to the left. Uh, and the magnetic field's out of the page or out of the screen. So if you do left cross out of the screen, you get up. So there's a, there would be a force on that plus charge that goes up. But the plus charge can't freely move up, right? That's the, the, the wire is a rod. And yeah, maybe it might collect to the top side of the wire, but it can't really move there. So it doesn't really collect there. Uh, but if you look at a plus charge right here, it's also moving to the left uh, as a result of the whole loop moving to the left. And again, the magnetic field's out of the screen. And so QV cross V would point up. So those plus charges uh, will start to move up and any, any negative charge carriers would move down. So basically there's a plus, uh, the plus charges is congregate right there and the minus charges congregate right here. So there's a motional EMF set up between those two ends of the circuit, or sorry, of the, of the loop. And that motional EMF will drive a, uh, induced current that will go this way around the uh, around the loop. So induced current goes that way. You know, notice how there's no EMF on this side because there's no magnetic field on the left hand side, right? If we actually had a magnetic field on the other side as well, so if the magnetic field, so pretend we had this, and we took a loop like this and then moved it to the left. What would happen is that we would see that plus charges build up here and here and plus charges build up here and here. And what happens if you have a battery, two batteries that look like this in a circuit and they're equal in EMF, what would the direction of the current be? There would be no current, right? Because the batteries kind of cancel each other out. They're, they're fighting each other, but they're both trying to create current in opposite directions. So you would still get emotional EMF from the top side versus the bottom side, uh, but there's no induced current there. And this is why it was crucial in this problem for there to be no magnetic field on the left in order for that to be an overall EMF that's driving current around this, this circuit. So, um, getting rid of that. Um, explain why the loop, to loop, the loop to the left acts like it has a battery. There's a motional EMF set up. So at the top side of you know, this corner has higher uh, electric potential than this side. That's for part A. And part B, what's the direction of the current? Looks like we have uh, counterclockwise is that direction. 